My name is John Branningham, and this is my prose poem, Lightning Storm. I'm teaching class during a storm that's happening at the exact same time a solar flare is arcing off the sun on an afternoon when four planets plus Pluto are aligned. And I'm into a long discussion of metaphysics when I sneeze, just as a lightning bolt passes over my head, stretching all the way to my house three miles away. And in that moment, back at home, my dog sneezes. And for a minute, my soul is taken out of my body, and Archie's soul is taken out of his body. And we switch bodies. And for a brief, brief time, Archie gains human consciousness, and I gain dog consciousness, and we both start to bark. For in that one moment, Archie can see his whole life so far stretching behind him, and he sees a clock, and he gains that human understanding of what time is, and that he's had time, and that time is moving ahead of him, but that time is something that comes and disappears, and that time is going to come and disappear, and he's, and he's heading for something that, and, and that he's heading for something that smells a lot like the end of his time, and that he's going to end someday, that he's going to die, just fucking die. And he's never spoken English before, so he starts to bark at my students. He loses it and starts barking through my body, trying to make the words that tell them he wants to do something. He has to accomplish something. It all has to mean something in some kind of profound way. And aside from taking nice walks and guarding my house from well-intentioned neighbors, he can't see that he's done all that much, even though I keep telling him he's a good boy. He barks existentially about time and the past and his puppyhood, and he barks religiously, wondering if there is a dog god, and if all dogs truly do go to heaven. And he barks about the wasted time, time we could have been together, but we were filling up hours with chores and arguments and worries. And he barks about politics and the Sudan and health care and the state of the government and how Pluto is no longer a planet and the fact that we're laying off teachers and the invisible children and the fact that we've all let this become so overwhelming in our heads that we push it all out. He barks about all of this and more, until he's just barking and barking, and then those bars, barks turn into a scream, a long, howling scream that makes my students wonder if this is going to be on the test, and how they should record this in their notes. And the scream turns into a realization that he can speak English, and he wants all the answers, and maybe some of these wide-eyed young people have the answers, when he sneezes again and finds himself back in his body, and I find myself back in my body, my voice now hoarse from barking and screaming. But Archie can still see it all. He understands it from a human point of view and a dog point of view, and he keeps barking, he keeps trying to speak to my wife, who is in the living room on her haunches, trying to tell him that it's just lightning and thunder, and that he's all right, but, but he can't take it. So he goes into the backyard and tilts his head upwards, calling out to Pluto, letting all the dogs on Pluto know that he knows, and he feels, and he wishes they could have a planet instead of whatever it is that Pluto has become. But that sometimes we don't get anything that we wanted. We just get a dash of knowledge that ruins the whole thing. He barks all of this at the sky until he's howling so loud my wife can't tell the thunder for his barks anymore. True story.